So my, I'm Anthony Harris, and I'm going to discuss with you in a very short lecture about how we collect data and how we can set up a data collection form. So it's very important with data to decide what you need to answer the objectives of your study. So what data do you really, really need that will answer all of those objectives and ultimately the aim of your research protocol? You should think about eliminating data that might be useful or interesting because otherwise your data collection form can become very large and your effort involved in collecting those data may increase substantially as well. You need to identify what data are available routinely, what data are not available routinely where you may have to do a special surveillance or a special survey to collect those data and that of course adds to the work involved in doing your study and do you really need this non-routine data? How are you going to collect it? So just to give you an example, this was one of our colleagues at the Union who did some very simple research around sputum smear microscopy. And you can see this was his data collection form. He had a laboratory serial number, a laboratory code, registration date, the examinee's age in years, the examinee's sex, the reason for the examination, and then result of specimen one, result of specimen two, and result of specimen three. And with that simple data set, Dr. Hans Rieder and his colleagues wrote six very important papers that changed the thinking around how we should do and collect sputums for doing sputum smear examination in pulmonary tuberculosis. So when you come to listing your variables, it's very useful to have a table like this. You put the data variable down with its possible values, and you indicate on the right-hand column where the source of that data might come from. So let me give you an example, a simple study done in Malawi. The research question was, does the pattern of tuberculosis change in relation to HIV status? Now the data needed was as follows. We of course needed HIV status, and the parameters of this are HIV positive, HIV negative, HIV indeterminate, where the test hasn't produced either a positive or a negative result, and HIV not done. Type of TB, there's three types, smear positive pulmonary TB, smear negative pulmonary TB, and extra pulmonary TB. And in some programs, you might decide to also stratify smear negative pulmonary TB into smear negative pulmonary TB brackets, smears done, but negative, and smear negative pulmonary TB, smears not done. And then category of TB is new or previously treated. So does the pattern of TB change in relation to HIV status? What other data do we need? Do we need age? Do we need sex? Do we need the type of hospital admitted to? How many sputum smears? The patient's ID number? And you have to decide, think through, what am I going to say in this study? What am I going to present? And do I need these other pieces of data? And how am I going to get them? So we decided, in fact, we did not need age, sex, and uh, other parameters. But we did need a participant ID number so we could check that what data we had was accurate if we needed to go back to the records and we did need something about which TB unit we were getting this data from. So this was our data collection tool, showing very simply the participant ID number, the TB unit, the TB registration number, the category of TB new or previously treated, the type of TB smear positive pulmonary TB, smear negative pulmonary TB, extra pulmonary TB, and HIV status, positive, negative, indeterminate, or not done. How do we manage these data collection forms? You need a good system. You need both hard and soft copies systematically kept and safe. Very important. 
And I would advise that data entry is done soon after you collect those data. I have seen too many examples during my life of data collected, stored on the window pane or on a shelf, and nothing done with that data six months later, by which time you've forgotten what the data is about and you may have problems with that data being safe and secure. You need to back up frequently, particularly if you're using electronic data sets. So, it's advised that when you have the data, these are kept safely for five years after completion of the study, because people may ask you about those data sets up to five years after the study. Make sure you have a very good and secure filing system. What I show you on the left is not good because it can be knocked down and your order can be lost. Filing cabinets are much better if you're going for a paper-based system. Finally, I'd like to give you an example of a very nice study done by my colleagues in India looking at drug resistance. And the objective was to determine the prevalence of multi-drug resistance in new and previously treated patients in the program during the year 2006 in Andhra Pradesh, India. And this was their data collection form. Now, in fact, this data collection form collects much more data than you need. You can go through this and look at district, TB unit, sex, age, but as you scroll down, you can see that we have questions as follows. Sick for how long? Did you use the same, did you have the same symptoms prior to this episode? Did you have symptoms of lung disease prior to this episode? Hemoptysis, chest pain, cough. Did you have an x-ray examination prior? Did you have a sputum examination prior? This was nothing to do with the aim or the objectives of the study. And in fact, the data were collected but never used in the publication of that paper. So a waste of time. When the paper was finally published in PLOS One, I think it was, this was the table one showing you the characteristics, male, female, new, previously treated, looking at the age groups and looking at the TB culture results. And then table two, which was the only other table in the study looking at drug susceptibility patterns in relation to resistance to one of the four TB drugs. So nothing about symptoms or hemoptysis or chest pain. So in conclusion, what I'd like to say is that only gather the data you will use. So you need to think through what are my objectives and for each objective, what are the variables I need to collect to answer that objective. Be systematic. Your data is precious. Make sure you back it up. And there's a very good adage, which I always uh, uh, go along with, and the adage is, less is more. If you do less, put less data in, you can get more information over to the people reading your studies. Thank you very much.